Good morning, everybody. Today we're reading a whole book of the Bible, Second John. So today, when people ask you what you've been doing, you can tell them you read a whole book of the Bible today. All right, all right. I hope everyone had a good weekend and you're ready for the morning. All right. You're ready for a new week. And hey, for all you parents out there, keep up the hard work with uh, at-home schooling. You can do it. I believe in you. Well, let me pray and we'll get started. Father God, thank you so much for an opportunity to uh, be with you this morning to open your word. May it encourage us, help us to be more like you each and every day. Father, we thank you that you are our savior, that we can abide in your truth and in your love, Father. Thank you for Second John. Help us to be in step with your spirit today. In your name, amen. All right, good morning, everybody. I see all y'all there in the chat. Glad to see you. And Second John. So again, First, Second, Third John, all written by the Apostle John in his older age. And throughout all three books, the words abiding, truth, love, and walking. Okay? Abiding, walking. Think of that. I'm resting, yet I'm doing. Love and truth. All displayed in First, Second, and Third John. So, here we go. First, uh, Second John, verse 1. We're reading the whole book today. The elder to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all who know the truth, for the sake of the truth which abides in us, will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and in love. I was very glad to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we have received commandment to do from the Father. Now I ask you, lady, not as though I were writing to you a new commandment, but one which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another, and this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard it from the beginning, that you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone it out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves what you do. Watch what yourselves that you do not lose what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The one who abides in this teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house and do not give him a greeting. For the one who gives him a greeting participates in all evil deeds. And all in his evil deeds, excuse me. Though I have many things to write to you, I do not want to do so with paper and ink. But I hope to come to you and speak face to face so that your joy may be made full. The children of your chosen sister greet you. So... Second John and our five questions. What do we learn about the Lord here? Mercy and peace come from God the Father. That's in verse three. And from Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the Father. We, we see scripture telling us this is the truth. Um, and it's also part of love, too. So um, what else do we learn about the Lord? He gave us commandments to follow, okay? So that walking in love is following his commandments, abiding in the teaching of Christ is his commandment. Um, we have, if we can stretch things out a little bit, we can infer from verse eight that we have a full reward to receive from God, not from anyone else. If 
we abide in Christ. We have, we abide with the Lord, right? The one who abides in the teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. Okay? So, again, Second John is such a short book. It's kind of easy to kind of pick out the details, isn't it? So, what do we learn about man? What do we learn about man? We could be deceived. There are deceivers out there who don't believe that Jesus came in the flesh. That's something we need to make sure we are not a part of, that we don't give any kind of credence to at all. Um, be willing to disprove that, stand up for Jesus in that way. Another thing we, we see that parents don't, we don't like to hear about it, but is what it is. I was very glad, verse four, I was very glad to find some of your children walking in the way. There's only so much we can do to pour into our children. Eventually, at some point, they take their faith as their own, and they are adults, and what they do with it, what they've been taught, is, in, is on them. It's on them. And when we, when we raise our children, when we raise them, uh, remember, here in, you know, scriptural times back at the turn of bc and ad you know you were really considered an adult somewhere in the teenage years and you know that's hard for us to conceptualize but it was a thing and eventually at some point even now us and depending no matter what our culture dictates there comes a point in a young adult's life that they have to make their faith their own it's going to be a little different from yours. It might be completely set aside, too. That's a, a, a reality that we need to be prepared for, okay? Not that we have to be happy about it, but that's something that we need to prepare our, our lives for. And then, um, but we have that capacity. We have that capacity to take what we've been taught and just set it aside, which is sin. And we need to be careful of that even as older adults, right? Even as older adults, we struggle with that because we are not perfect by any means, by any means. So is there a sin to avoid? Is there a sin to avoid? Uh, if you try to teach beyond what Christ teaches, uh, if you try to, you know, don't, you know, it's, it's Christ plus something else. You've gone too far. You've gone too far. And our, our our hope in eternal life is in faith in Christ alone. And that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? So is there a commandment to follow? Yes, clearly, right? Clearly, he says, and this is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you heard from the beginning, that you should walk in it. Walking in the truth. Uh, there's this mixture of love and truth that lets us abide in it and walk in it at the same time um, that we will more fully comprehend when we get to heaven. And um, in this life, I hope we spend as much energy and effort as we can to try to figure that out. Well, how are we going to come away changed? I mean, Second John is a teeny tiny book. Third John tomorrow is even shorter, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, there's two more verses. But let's see. If I look at my paper, oh, no, it's about the exact same size. Uh, Second John, teeny tiny book, but it's impactful. If we just take that core concept of the mixture of truth and love and that mixture of walking and abiding, Letting that drive our our energy, our attitude, our compassion for people, we we will be okay. Look to love in truth, and walk and abide in that truth and love, and just ask yourself, what's the next right thing to do? In the next fifteen minutes, what's the next right thing to do? In the next hour, what's the next right thing to do? And then be about doing that. 